Yes, Gordon, go! With a fishing rod nonetheless. Oh my goodness! Never in the history of Skyrim has someone too hit a dragon with a fishing rod. And yet here we are with Gordon Ramsay, Dragon Slayer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and welcome back to the fantastical world of Skyrim. I know it's the greatest game of all time, and today we're going to be beating it in an entirely new way, which Todd Howard hadn't originally intended to be possible. Now, I love beating Skyrim using some of the worst weapons possible. Take a look at, say, the Skyrim Fork. It's absolutely terrible, and yet we made it one hit a dragon. And today we're going to be going on a marvelous adventure as we try and beat Skyrim using quite possibly its brand new worst weapon. It's the fishing rod, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's been added in with the latest update, and this bad boy is absolutely terrible. It's less effective than actually tickling your opponent, and so consequently you would never logically use it as a weapon. Well today, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're going to do, because evidently I just hate myself. So strap yourselves in, grab yourself a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea, and if you're feeling especially fantastic, you could even like the video. Now let's dive into a brand new game, and beat this game in quite possibly the worst way possible. God, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> and here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we've made our wonderful hero. It's none other than Gordon Ramsay himself. He's ported himself into the world of Skyrim because he's heard that there's some tasty fish, and this man is on an adventure to slay the tastiest of all fish, the sky fish, otherwise known as giant dragons. But sadly, he has to stick to a very specific rule set. Now, just what are those rules? Firstly, the only weapon I can use is a fishing rod. I can use two fishing rods, but these fishing rods can never be modified by poison or enchanted. That's right, I can no longer just whack on a fortify absorb life by 400% as that kind of destroys the purpose of beating someone with a flimsy fishing rod. It's going to be glorious. And of course, starting off today's Janksgiving Parade is this interesting feature in the game's uh, character creator, because by switching between body and head, I don't know what's happening to the camera here, but Todd, I think it needs to be exercised. Anyway, let's dive straight into the game with the legendary Gordon Ramsay. Now, let's begin. Right, okay, we're on our glorious escape from Helgen, and uh, there's our first huge skyfish of the adventure. I hope one day we're going to be able to eat him, uh, but until then, we need to actually escape. So uh, we're gonna go with Rayloff this time. Um, yeah, I don't like him, but hey, it's fine. He can rebel against the Empire all he likes. Uh, the Queen will one day put him down for being a treacherous bastard. I just need him to release me. Right, fantastic. With my bindings removed, Gordon Ramsay is now free. He can move. Now, uh, we have Gunjar here, who we're meant to basically loot from, and we could take a weapon from from him, but the issue is it's not a fishing rod, so uh, we can't actually use it. But what we will do is take his clothes. We're then also going to take off our clothes and not put his clothes on because they just don't really suit Gordon Ramsay. Whereas his rippling biceps do, because my god, this dude is jacked. Now, of course, as the rules of our challenge dictate, we can only use the fishing rod to do damage, which is going to make this opening segment a little bit challenging uh, because basically we can't fight them. All right now, fantastic. Fantastic, it's time for us to actually make our escape, of course, without actually really punching or hitting anyone and just letting Brailoff do all the work. The true AFK way to play Skyrim. Well, we've managed to escape from Helgen with a grand total of zero people killed and pretty much absolutely nothing done beyond uh, gold looted, really. So naturally, uh, we're off with Brailoff to go catch ourselves some skyfish, or rather, Brailoff's just gonna bugger off somewhere else. We don't really need him, we are making our own way in this world, okay? So first things first, we need to gather ourselves our ingredients for destruction. Namely, we need a fishing rod, and luckily for us, the game provides. In fact, quite literally right here at the start, there is access to a fishing rod nearly given straight away. And so that's exactly what we're making our way towards. So right here, we've got the standing stones of power, and then just behind it, we've got ourselves a fishing spot. So over here we come, and we're gonna grab ourselves our fishing rod. Wabam, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a fishing rod. Here's our bad boy, he does free damage, he has a weight of 3 and he has a value of 10. He might not look like much, but trust me, using this guy, we're gonna basically defeat the game. And, uh, wabam. Now, I have noticed this woman has fish, and, um, we could use some of that fish. Also, she's dressed like a fisherman. Oh, and she also has a coin purse here. Oh, and there's some cooked fish. Oh, I'm sorry, woman, but, um, you need to die. This is gonna actually take quite a bit. It doesn't help that she's blocking, but it's okay. We can just fishing rod our way through her defenses. She might have an axe, but I have a 
flimsy piece of wood that makes a bonking noise. She swears she'll kill us, but I'm afraid it's not going to be enough. I am the fisherman of death, and you are dead! <laughs> I don't ask how I could stab someone through the chest using a flimsy piece of wood, but apparently I can. Anyway, we're gonna be taking all of those fishing gears. And hang on a second, was that another fishing rod she gave us? <gasps> oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, you know what that is? That's a second fishing rod. Oh, this is fantastic. We are now more powerful than ever before. And most importantly, we also have clothes now. That's right, we are now Fisherman Gordon. Also, check out how we run. We're adorable. We're like Naruto, but a fisherman. This is completely cursed. I love it. Anyway, it's off to Riften we go as we need to make ourselves a god. And wow, we really do just move like an absolute idiot. But hey, Gordon, I love you. You're fantastic. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've made my way all the way over to the Riften Fisheries for one very important reason. Uh, these bad boys are ramped packed with all of the necessary ingredients to make fortify restoration potions. That's right, we can just make our way inside of here and basically loot an endless quantity of ingredients to let us make these potions. Now, best of all, we could steal all of these items, or if we give Wujita here a single health potion, we can just ransack the place for free. And this means we now get to search through all of these barrels and basically steal a huge amount of salt and fish. Now, we're mostly looking for the Abyssian Longfin, the Cyrodiilic Spade Tail, and Salt Piles. So, there we have it. We've pretty much robbed the entire place of all of its fish, which is fantastic. If we take a look in our inventory now at all of our ingredients, we've got five Abyssian Long Fins, seven Cyrodiilic Spade Tails, and 13 Salt Piles. Now, I'm also going to go and hop outside into the waters of Riften, as there's even more fishes in there. Right, well, after jumping in and out of the water for an incredibly long time, I have managed to amass an absolute wealth of ingredients for my recipes in order to break the game. We have 62 Salt Piles, 14 Cyrodiilic Spade Tails, and 14 Absian Long Fins. This is fantastic. We can make 28 Fortify Restoration Potions. But before we start potion crafting, we need to get a few more items to actually make our potion making valuable. So in order to pull that off, we're going to have to head all the way back over to Dawnstar as we've got a merchant's chest to break into. Oh, and of course, luckily for us, the Khajiits are standing right here. So we can take a look inside this Khajiit's inventory and see if they have the items that we're looking for. In our case, we're looking for some kind of item that allows us to boost our potion making abilities. The Khajiit sadly does not have such an item. So instead, we're going to have to punch the Khajiit in the face. So what we do is we drop down a quick save, punch the Khajiit, reload the quick save, and refresh the trader's inventory. And wabam, it's as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Check out these hide braces of alchemy. Now, of course, we do not have anywhere near enough money to actually buy this item, so instead we're not going to do that. We're going to quite simply run in this direction over here and steal from the trader's actual secret hidden inventory that is located just around the corner. Right, so well, bam, we just come over here, loot this chest, and would you look at that, it's the trader's entire inventory, meaning we can just yoink these hide braces of alchemy directly. Fantastic. It's time for us to actually train up some of our alchemy. Now, there's of course two ways to do this. Way number one would involve us actually doing alchemy. Way number two is to basically convince the AI to teach us. Right now, we've made our way back over to White Run, and it's going to be straight over to the alchemy shop because we've got some alchemizing to do. So, first things first, we're going to get lovely Arcadia to actually teach us alchemy. Now, this costs money. In fact, it's going to cost us 220 gold to do this, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we can just get the gold back. So, we're going to basically get her to level us up. A whole bunch went up to level 19 alchemy. Fantastic. That's now level 20 and 21. Glorious. Uh, but sadly, we lack the money to do the next tier. But don't worry, because we can just say, I've got stuff for sale. And she's got all of our money just hanging around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell her this cork bulb root. Press E, go into her inventory, and sell her back her own ingredients. I think fire salts are fantastic for this. So there we go. we bam. You'll notice in the bottom right, we are just gaining money and speech as we convince her to buy her own goods off of herself. And in the process, give us money. This is true. 100% Todd Howard approved Skyrim gameplay. And of course, because we managed to actually gain a whole bunch of experience in our lovely potion making, we're now able to level up. Right now, what we're going to do is we're also going to sink a perk point into Alchemist so that our potions are now 40% stronger, which is lovely. And at the same time, we're going to speak to Arcadia again because we've leveled up. And that means she's actually able to teach us all of the alchemy again. I know, every time you level up, you can go back to a trainer. And because we're leveling up off of this trainer, it works perfectly for us. And bam, there we go. We've now increased our alchemy to 
7 literally just off of repeatedly cyberbullying this NPC. And now of course I need all of my money back. And we're bam, we've hit level 8. My goodness, okay, this is getting rather ridiculous. But hey, that's level 8. We've now got two perks lying around. I'm going to get trained again. And now we're going to go up to uh, alchemy level 41. Oh dear, oh dear. So there we go. We've maxed ourselves out pretty much as far as we can go. We have a huge amount of points into alchemy. And we even have a spare perk point lying around, which I reckon we can probably sink into the one-handed tree in a little bit. So what we're going to do is try and make ourselves some lovely basic potions. Now, if we were to not wear any of our amazing items that make our ability to make potions better, and we were to just quite simply make a very basic fortify restoration potion using an Absian long fin and a salt pile, then we've got a fortify restoration of 27%, which is good, but it could be a lot better. So when we whack on our lovely items to make our potion making better and make another potion of fortify restoration, suddenly this one is 34%, which is much better. But of course, we can go deeper. For you see, by taking off these items and then drinking this restoration potion, the effects of all positive effects are now going to be increased as well. This means when we actually take a look at our apparel, this lovely hide brazier here now increases crafted potion strength by 20%. It's fantastically perfectly balanced. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to wait 60 seconds for that first potion to wear off. And now that the effects of it have worn off and our items are back to normal, we're going to take them off and chug our improved Fortify Restoration Potion. Right, we're then going to chug this next potion, which is 50% stronger. And sadly, this one doesn't improve our items anymore. They're maxed out until we're somehow able to break the cap. But luckily, if we go into the skill tree here, I have a slight feeling that if I manage to bung a perk point into the benefactor bonus here, our potions with beneficial effects will actually be increased by more than 25%. So now let's go experiment by trying to make a new potion. Yep, suddenly this Fortify Restoration Potion is 72% stronger. Lovely. So we can of course quit the alchemy menu after making that bad boy, take off our apparel, chug a potion of now 72% Fortify Restoration, put that apparel back on and suddenly it's a fair bit more powerful. Then we go back into the alchemy lab and we do it all over again. Ah look, 98% more powerful. Now that's what I'm talking about. Back on out we go and we're going to repeat this process again. Now the Fortify Restoration loop is really powerful because you can just keep these potions on you for effectively ever and then you can chug them for temporary bouts of amazing power. Like for example I could chug one and then put on this ring of minor wielding and suddenly my one-handed attacks are doing 32% more damage. That could potentially increase the amount of damage we're doing with the fishing rods by two. Wow! <laughs> okay sadly that's I know not enough to actually get excited about but it is still impressive. Anyway back into the alchemy lab we go because our items have just been improved once more. We're going to make another potion and yes we've pretty much hit our limit. We can create a fortify restoration potion of 170% which is remarkably powerful but we're going to need to find another way to break out of this because we're going to need to actually create another apparel item. Something to also improve our alchemy some more and for that we're going to need to do some enchanting. So let's go buff our alchemy even more. Six and a half hours later. Welcome back. I've managed to craft myself a few new items to improve my alchemy abilities. We've got our ring, our braces, we've got a circlet on, and we're even wearing a necklace, all of which are boosting our alchemy by a few little percent. And using this advantage, we're going to actually make ourselves some more potions, but this time even more powerful potions. So we're going to take off all of our amazing items here that buff our potion creation. We're going to chug one potion of restoration, and then another potion of restoration, and then finally the last potion of restoration. Then we're going to put on all of our lovely alchemy items, use the alchemy lab in front of us, mix the cyrodelic spade tail with the wonderful salt pile and make ourselves a fortify restoration potion. Lovely. Then we're going to back on out of the alchemy menu here, take off our buffed clothing of alchemy, chug the potion of restoration. Right now suddenly our lovely necklace of alchemy is up to 45% along with the hide braces and the circlet and so this means that the next restoration potion we make, chances are it's going to be quite powerful. There we go, it's 319% more powerful. Lovely. Now we chug this bad boy, suddenly our items have pretty much doubled in power again. The ball is definitely rolling now. Okay, so we've just massively increased our restoration abilities. If we now put on our lovely items of alchemy production, you'll notice they are now in the thousands of percentage of strength, which is wonderful. Okay, so next up we're going to make ourselves another potion. This one has a chance to actually crash the game, so I will drop down another save. Okay, so we're going to use the alchemy lab with all of our improved items. We're going to make another fortify restoration potion. This one is 500,000% stronger. 
stronger. Uh, and we'll just take our alchemy up to 77, just pretty much instantaneously, uh, which is lovely. Now, if we were to chug this huge potion, we're going to be able to make some absolutely nightmarish abominations. Now, we're going to make ourselves a new potion. It's going to use Hagraven Claws, and it's going to use a Spriggan Sap. This is going to be a Fortify Enchanting Potion. And this bad boy is going to allow us to enchant items for the next 30 seconds for 358,000% more than what they would normally be. So it's over to the enchanting table we go. We're going to chug our potion of enchanting strength, and then we're going to very quickly enchant ourselves an item that is going to allow us to make potions very, very powerful. This way we don't have to do the restoration loop every time we want to make high-powered potions. So we chug that. Now we can enchant like a literal god. We're then going to pick an item to enchant. We're going to go for this lovely basic silver amethyst ring here. Pick an enchantment to fortify alchemy. Fill it with a grand soul gem. Suddenly we can now enchant for 3 million strength. Let's rename this item after our lord and savior, God Howard. And well, bam, we can craft it. But hey, now we no longer have to worry necessarily about fortify restoration potions because we have an item right here, God Howard, that allows us to make god tier potions. So now, what are we going to do with ourselves? Well, firstly, we're going to get back into our lovely chef's clothes because we just look so lovely in them. And then next up, we're going to be making our way on a little adventure, ladies and gentlemen, because we need to improve our ability to do one-handed damage. And yes, I could create, say, a ring right now using this arcane enchanter. I could say make this lovely necklace here, increase my one-handed damage so my one-handed attacks do 13% more damage. This is okay. It's not fantastic. It's not going to break the game. And equally, it's an item. We're not really actually improving Gordon Ramsay. We're merely whacking something onto him. So we need to improve the very essence that is Gordon Ramsay. And so in order for us to do that, we need to go on a quest. And that quest, ladies and gentlemen, is going to take us all the way out of Skyrim. I know, it's going to be quite the adventure. Right now, I've made my way all the way over to Windhelm for one very important reason. There's a boat over here that is going to allow us to go on a lovely journey to the Isle of Solsteam. And the reasoning we're coming over to Solsteam is because there is one very special stone. A stone which increases our ability to do one-handed damage. And this is not like an item. It's not like a ring. This is true power. A god's gift being absorbed by the body of Gordon Ramsay so that he can decimate the world using fishing rods. Because right now he is ridiculously feeble. He can genuinely not hit anyone because now that we've achieved level 19, the actual enemies we're going to be fighting are stupidly powerful. For example, to demonstrate this, here is a Redoran guard. Now, I can try and attack them, uh, but you'll notice even with a power attack, I'm doing basic no damage. Meanwhile, they are able to pretty much massacre me, and in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it would basically be completely even. This means we have absolutely no chance of defeating a dragon. So we're going to turn ourselves into a god. In order to do this, we need to go visit a temple. Now, what I've done is I've made my way inside the temple, and over here on the left, we have the wonderful Shrine of Beofire. Now, the Shrine of Beofire, like most shrines in Skyrim, gives us a bonus. This one increases the amount of damage we do by one handed weapons by 10% for 8 hours, which is very nice. But interestingly, if we chug a potion of Fortify Restoration, say this potion here that fortifies Restoration by 111,000%, then very interestingly, the effects of actually using this shrine are increased again. So for the next 7 hours, one handed weapons now do 11,000% more damage. Now that's what I call perfectly balanced. We now have the ability to one hit someone using a fishing rod, because we have become a god. I know. Oh, a fishing god. Hello there, guard. Right, bam, you're dead. One hit. We can even see how much damage our weapons do. Each fishing rod is now doing 568 damage. Oh my god. What the hell is this? Okay, sure, this is fantastic. Okay, if we were to exit into Solstheim right now, and we were to fight our way for all of the guards, which of course we can do very easily. Oh yes, yes, we are still made of paper, but don't worry, we can run fast and we can hit hard. Now, in order to prove just how powerful Gordon Ramsay is, I've decided to spawn an elder dragon. One very, very powerful skyfish, which of course Gordon Ramsay intends to feast upon. And oh my goodness, it breathes fire. <laughs> now I just need the dragon to land and then Gordon Ramsay can fish him. Yes, here we go. And punch. Yes, Gordon, go! With a fishing rod nonetheless. Oh my goodness! Never in the history of Skyrim has someone to hit a dragon with a fishing rod. And yet here we are with Gordon Ramsay, dragon slayer. Oh my goodness. Okay, welcome back. I've been on an adventure to Dawnstar, punched a Khajiita 
bunch until I've managed to get an item that I'm looking for. A hide armor with the enchantment of fortifying your health. Now we're going to need this because we could really do with some way to actually make Gordon Ramsay a little bit more sturdy. And the best way we can do that is to put an enchantment to fortify health onto our lovely chef's tunic. Issue is if we were to do that right now we'd only gain an extra 20 points in health. That's not going to save us from a dragon. So instead we're simply thinking too small. We need to go bigger. So let's use this alchemy lab. Firstly we're going to want to put on our god Howard ring so that our potions are 30 million times more powerful. Then we're going to make a potion of fortifying enchanting using a hag raven claw and a snowberry. So we're going to craft this bad boy and we're bam suddenly our enchantments are now 4 million times as powerful for the next 30 seconds. We're going to grab ourselves our lovely chef's tunic. We're going to whack on an enchantment to fortify health. Uh, this is going to increase our health by negative 20 million. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here. It could be something. Oh my goodness, I'm going to drop down a save because we could create something that might be too powerful. Um, I think this is going to go fine. This is going to be the lamb sauce. This is what Gordon Ramsay was looking for the whole time. The lamb sauce. Uh, this has raised our enchanting, I think, up 429 out of 429 to 429. Uh, yeah, yeah, enchanting is now broken. We've completely and utterly destroyed it. Anyway, let's take a look at our new bit of apparel. We're actually wearing the lamb sauce right now, which is actually increasing our health by negative 2 billion. Don't ask me how a statistic is being increased by a minus 2 billion, but it is. If we go up into our skills and take a look at our health, we can see that our health rests around a very comfortable 10 billion. Yep, that's right, we have 10 billion health, which I think is uh, maybe just enough to allow us to survive. Oh god, right, well we're gonna make ourselves another fortify enchanting potion as we need to improve our one-handed skill now that we've turned Gordon Ramsay into an immortal. That's right, it's going to be a necklace to fortify one-arm damage. I don't know what this number is even trying to express, but we're going to take it. This is going to be Hell's Own Kitchen. Hell's Own Kitchen manages to fortify and increase the amount of damage one-handed attacks do by minus 1.5 billion. So we're going to equip this and now go into the weapons and see that, okay, the fishing rod does a little bit more damage than it used to. Our total predicted output of damage is now up to 674 million. This is a little bit more than the standard fishing rod as we have now become a god. Oh my good lord. Don't believe me? Well, allow me to demonstrate. Hello there, white run guard. Oh my good lord. What the heck? How do you impale a man with two fishing rods straight through the chest? I don't know how it can be done, but we managed it. Anyway, hello there, white run guard. You're not going to manage to survive this. Oh my good lord, Gordon. Gordon, why? You don't even need their ingredients. Gordon Ramsay, my friend, you've become death. Destroyer of worlds. Oh my goodness. Forged in the fires of hell's own kitchen. You're now ready to capture and defeat the greatest threat to Skyrim, the Skyfish. So it's time for us to find one of the greatest enemies that Skyrim has to offer, and of course, what all aspiring chefs wish to slay, giant dragons. So today we're going to see if Gordon Ramsay can defeat 11 elder dragons. That's right. We don't have any ranged attack, but there's 11 of these bad boys and uh, they're gonna try and crisp us. But that's fine. Just like a non-stick frying pan, this boy is heat resistant. Doesn't matter how much flame and fire you sizzle him with, he was forged in Hell's Kitchen, dragons. Your pathetic powers are meaningless. He is a god. Yes, the greatest of gods. You think you can land down here and survive, dragons? No, you cannot. Ah, you stand on the ground where I can murder you? Oh no, some of the dragons are attacking what appear to be completely peaceful, innocent bandits and noble people. No, I shall save you, brave noble man. There you go, you are dead, evil dragon. What are you doing here? Why aren't you running, Mr. Nobleman? Nobleman, how are you alive? What are you doing here? There is literally a giant apocalypse and you're just standing here vibing. All right, kill this dragon. Don't worry, brave nobleman, I shall protect you. And there we go, we've done it. We've actually done it. Wow, who knew Skyrim was this easy, especially as a chef? I thought playing as a chef with no armor and using fishing rods, which were objectively one of the worst weapons in the entire game, might make this game actually difficult. But no, it turns out it's still completely easy and perfectly balanced. Well, I guess we have to actually fight the strongest warrior in Skyrim then, the Ebony Warrior, and see if Gordon Ramsay can beat him. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Ebony Warrior, a man who believes he's a greater chef than Gordon Ramsay. Little does he know he is completely wrong, because you see, Gordon is an absolute god. Doesn't matter how tall you are or how tasty you think you might be, Gordon will get the tastiest nutrients out of you. So, let us murder the Ebony Warrior. Firstly, we must start the fight by punching him. Now he knows we're ready to run 
crumble and he will hit us with his greatest attacks and he'll even Fusradar us. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Oh, he really yeeted Gordon Ramsay there, but uh, don't worry, we're still going to be able to beat him. It's time to murder an ebony warrior. Goodbye, my friend. That was surprisingly anticlimactic. Yeah, I genuinely thought he would put up a fair bit more of a fight than that, but um, I guess I guess that means Gordon Ramsay is, uh, he's done it. He's actually done it, ladies and gentlemen. This was quite possibly one of the worst ways to try and beat Skyrim, but we have completely and utterly proven that a fishing rod is absolutely amazing because yes, in principle, as soon as I drop this weapon on the ground, it is just a standard fishing rod. It does free damage. It's unwieldy and it, it makes a stupid looking bonking sound and for some reason it just clipped into the terrain and fell out of the world. And yet there is something wonderful about the noble fishing rod that makes it such a wonderful way of beating the game. And it's entirely because of the overpowered specimen that is wielding the flimsy piece of plywood. And today that specimen was Gordon Ramsay. What a fine hunk of meat indeed. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed our adventures in Skyrim today then make sure to give the video a like. And why not try and beat Skyrim using a fishing rod yourself? I'm sure you have your own way of doing it that might not involve turning your main character into a god. But that's just how I like to pull it off. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video you are legally required to give it a like and go into the comment section and tell me what the worst weapon in Skyrim is that you've ever used. And maybe I can see if I can try and, you know, subtly balance it. And if you want to see more wonderful videos like this then why not consider subscribing? It massively helps us out. And finally a massive thank you to each and every one of our Patreons and YouTube channel members who make all of these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much, you ridiculously generous sausages. If you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.